Hello and welcome to Rudy's Electronics Lab. A lot of modern spectrum analyzers have some sort of FFT functionality included in them in order to make them work faster, especially as low resolution bandwidth. In this video I'm going to try to find out how much faster a spectrum analyzer actually gets by including FFT and I'll do that by doing some experiments on the FPC 1500 which is the Roden and Swartz entry level spectrum analyzer. So let's briefly review what two types of, of instrument architecture that we're looking at. First we're looking at the swept spectrum analyzer or the swept tuned spectrum analyzer as this is called. And that can be a, um, an analog device as we, um, as we see here on the, on the screen, but it can be also a much more modern um, digital represented uh, device. Now how does it um, exactly work? It works basically by taking an input signal, we'll take that through an attenuator, and prepare the signal with a low pass filter or a pre-selector filter and then basically the, the main part comes in will have a mixer stage that is being used to down convert the signal to a lower frequency level and we'll do that by a sweep generator so there's a sweep generator going from the lowest to the highest frequency of the sweep that we want to do that basically uh, runs a local oscillator and that goes into the, uh, the mixer and then out of the mix it might be amplified um, again. So basically we here got the sweep generator every time going from the start to the, to the stop value. Basically then we get, and that's kind of the main part here, is the resolution bandwidth filter that is going to pick out just the frequency um, within that bandwidth where we're interested to see it. So we bring it through this filter, we detect basically the, uh, the main value there, the highest value for the envelope filter, there might be a video bandwidth resolution field and that represents the y-axis while the sweep basically represents the x-axis. So we get to see our signal exactly from the lowest frequency in the sweep all the way to the highest frequency in the, uh, in the sweep. Uh -huh. um, now let's see what change we make if we actually turn this into an FFT or at least a, a, a spectrum analyzer that also supports FFT. So we're going to take away a couple of parts here of the analyzer that we got over here and basically we're keeping the oscillator but we'll see as that we will be using the oscillator in a slightly different way in a moment. We'll make it a local oscillator that will run into steps and so basically we're adding some new circuits basically where we have the IF down converter that down converts a part of the spectrum but we're not going to select a part anymore by using the bandwidth filter but instead after a filter will bring it into a analog digital converter, a whole piece of bandwidth at a time and then over that digital signal we run a FFT algorithm um, and that's basically being shown on the display. So this local oscillator is basically not going to go continuously from the start to the stop point but it's going to do it in steps. Each step represents a certain part of the, 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 the total frequency band we're interested in and that part is being digitalized at once. So basically then we got our fast Fourier, I will call it aided spectrum analyzer because in the end it's a hybrid device. Huh? We don't sample the spectrum all at once, these devices also exist, but we still do it in, in parts basically. Now that is basically again the, um, the two architectures that we're talking about today. Now let's do some experiments with the, um, the FPC and see um, what effect um, FFT has. So I just uh, started up the device and it's now at a, a center frequency of 1.3 gigahertz and a spam of 100 megahertz that we see here in the screen. And the resolution bandwidth is 100 kilohertz and everything still seems pretty smooth. Now let's reduce the resolution bandwidth to a value where we actually get some visible delay. Um, what is actually quite nice that the FPC actually reports the uh, sweep time and for now I'll just call it sweep time because in FFT it has not exactly the same meaning I would say but just let's say the time that it takes basically to plot a, uh, a full spectrum which is 1.9 seconds or so. That's also visually more or less confirmed. Huh? It takes about two seconds to go from the left to the, to the right. The big question now of course is in which mode is the device running right now? Is it running in the classic sweep mode or in FFT mode? Well, from this screen we basically cannot tell. 
There's nothing on this screen, I think, that, that, that going to give us any clue here about it. We'll need to find that out in another way, and that's actually going to the Setup menu. In the Setup menu, you go to User Preferences, you move your cursor all the way down, and then there is an item called Spectrum Sweep FFT Mode. So you can set it in three values here. So this is the automatic value, the always sweep value and the prefer FFT value. So we have to look a little bit more carefully at the, the meaning of these three categories to fully understand what we're going to see on the, uh, on the screen. Now, always sweep, that is kind of easy. That always forces the device into a sweep mode. Prefer FFT means that the device will use FFT if possible. That's why it doesn't say always FFT, but it says prefer FFT. And in the user manual, we actually find additional information uh, which explains us in which particular cases FFT is possible or, or not. I'm going to show them right now on the, uh, on the screen. If we're operating in, in one of the modes in which FFT is not possible, then it will run in sweep mode, even if you choose prefer FFT. And then in the auto mode, basically, the device automatically chooses the fastest option of the both. Right now I'm in, um, in, 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 in auto mode, so he's choosing the fastest, but I don't know which one it is. So let me just put it in always sleep, so I can force it into sleep mode and always see what we're getting. So that's what I did, and I'm exiting this menu. And look, we went from 1.9 seconds to 5 seconds. So basically the automatic mode we were apparently seeing FFT. So in sweep mode it's 5 seconds. Now let me just go back here to this menu and get it into the FFT setting. And then we get back to the 1.9 second here. So with this particular combination of settings on the device basically, the FFT is mode is faster and we can find out by by doing this. Um, what happens if you run in a mode in which FFT is not possible? Well, it's quite easy to see because you will going to see exactly the same value here for, for the two different modes because actually it's always into sweep mode because FFT is not possible. So you can kind of empirically confirm that if you get twice the same value when you change the mode between prefer FFT and, and always sweep, it's basically going to tell you that the device is always running in sweep mode and FFT is impossible at that, uh, at that moment. Now the actual gain in speed that we might have from, from using FFT in a device uh, will depend on a number of factors and particularly it will depend on the, the resolution bandwidth set and, and also the spam use. So let me first concentrate on the resolution bandwidth, setting my device on 10 megahertz, the center on 1310 megahertz. I'm going to tell a little bit more about my measurement setup in a moment and let's just see what I get for different resolution bandwidth. And when I use sweep mode I get something like this. I see for large resolution bandwidth the device is very fast, I think something like 20 milliseconds of sweep or so. At, at 1 kilohertz it starts already to get slower towards some 50 seconds um, and at 300 hertz it even gets so slow as 500 seconds for a single sweep. Now these differences in time are, 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 are so big that I actually will display them here in a logarithmic uh, vertical scale here. So we get a bit more sense for the relationship um, between uh, resolution bandwidth and the time it takes to, uh, to do a sweep. So as you can see here again on this graph, I'm presenting here the, the same data. At, um, at some 1 kilohertz we're already at 50 seconds or so and at 300 hertz we're moved here all the way down to 500 seconds. So it gets very, very slow, the device. Um, now what happens if I actually try to use the same measurement but don't force it to sweep but I do FFT measurement and then I get actually the curve over here. So actually at large resolution bandwidth FFT is somehow slower but then here from this junction point on it starts to get faster and then it gets significantly faster. Now in automatic mode the device will automatically slow the quick uh, select the quicker settings. So it will choose those settings over here and then it will move to the orange curves over here. So as a user you don't really have to change any of these settings if you don't care about uh, that. Now how big are the, um, are, are the advantages that we have here? Um, let, let's look at them because the log logarithmic scale might fool you a little bit in that. Um, if we look here at 3 kilohertz, 
um, using FFT already brings us down from 5.5 5 .5 to half a second. So that's a very considerable improvement. And if you look at one kilohertz, for example, we go back from 50 seconds to one second. So that's a very significant improvement in speed that we are experiencing. And as a matter of fact, using FFT, we also get some additional resolution bandwidth setting. In this case, 100 hertz that we did simply not have before in sweep because they will be undoable uh, when it comes to the time that a single sweep would, uh, would take. So actually we are, um, we are seeing at this particular setting of the device, we are already seeing a, um, a very significant improvement in time um, by using FFT in, in, in certain uh, resolution um, bandwidth. Now, I also did this exercise actually looking at a different um, spam ranges so we get a more full view. So let me just quickly take you through the measurement setup so you, you see what I've been doing. So for all the analysis that will follow, the center frequency is always set to 1.31 gigahertz. I choose this value so I can, can both do a, a very wide span of, of, of a gigahertz and much uh, smaller span. Then I'll also always be showing you the sweep times as they are reported by the spectrum analyzer. Um, I did not measure them by, uh, by hand. Um, and in some cases I got some results that I after all discarded because I believe what I was seeing were not FFT results after all. Uh, these were cases where I was getting on FFT exactly the same value as on the um, sweep analysis even though they did not uh, exactly qualify the criteria that, that I just showed of, uh, of Roden and Swartz in the manual. There are very few that I had to discard only but anyway I discarded the results at uh, 1 gigahertz spam um, so any bandwidth result and I also discarded one result at 100 megahertz where the resolution bandwidth was set to 300 kilohertz because there I got the same setting as well for sweep so that probably was not um, FFT after all. Um, one important caveat I want to mention here is that sweep time is not everything. A device could also have a certain dead time between the measurement that could be relevant or, or, or not to you. Um, this is actually something that I think that the CMU 200, what I'm going to talk a little bit later a little bit on, um, differs from the, uh, from the device I'm looking at, at today. So, so, so sweep time is not the only thing that you want to consider basically to be able to catch fast transient type of uh, signals. Having said that, let's now look at the uh, results for, uh, for different uh, spam values. And instead of going through all of them one by one, I will just present them in, a, uh, in one single sheet here and you can go yourself into more detail if you, uh, if you wish to. But what we basically see is a quite predictable behavior in terms of the sweep times value shifting to, to the left here and over time seeing that the FFT always adds like a important advantage when it comes to performance when we come to the lower values of the, uh, the resolution bandwidth and in quite many cases actually offering other values of resolution bandwidth that otherwise would not have been available. In one of my recent videos I also looked at the Roden & Swartz CMU200 which is a device that can also be used as a spectrum analyzer and, and it's quite a bit older here than the, the FPC over here. And in that video I actually told you I was not sure whether it was implementing FFT functionality or not. Most people thought it, 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 it would. Um, I wasn't exactly sure at that point whether that was true or, or not. Um, so we can say, use the same methodology that we use today and try to get a bit of better understanding for what is the situation with this uh, CMU uh, 200. So what do we get here? I'm showing you the same results here as we just had for the, uh, for the FPC. But in grey basically I added the values as I measured them on the Roden and Swartz CMU. You will see the, the, the settings are slightly different, the choices that you have for resolution um, bandwidth. Um, so I had to interpolate a little bit on the lines of the, of the FPC. But what we basically see that the gray line of the CMU very much looks like the sweep line on the FPC analyzer. And this seemed to suggest to me at least that the CMU really does not have FFT functionality. Even though some people have expressed their expectations that it, it would be there. But for me this really looks much more like a classic sweep device than a device that uses FFT in its regular type of um, spectrum analysis functionality. 
So that brings us to the end of today's uh, video. And I think the conclusion is simple. Um, FFT does bring a lot of performance gain to a, a, a spectrum analyzer, allowing us basically to, to, to have much more reasonable sweep times at, uh, at smaller resolution bandwidth settings, and also basically making new resolution bandwidth settings possible that would not have been possible in, in, in sweep analysis because of the incredible time that it will be uh, taken. So it's a, it's a valuable, uh, valuable addition to these devices. What I would have loved if our FPC here was actually able to show us directly from the screen whether it was running in FFT mode or, um, or not, um, that is unfortunately not the case. And maybe one day we're going to see that in a firmware update from, uh, from Roden and Swartz, although I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that all this will, will actually happen. But actually it will be something that, um, that I would very much appreciate. Thanks for looking at this, uh, this episode and uh, hope to see you uh, back in the future on my channel.